I talk a lot about lab equipment, and I recognize that a lot of you probably have never even been in a biochemistry lab, so might not know what I'm talking about. So since I'm doing videos, I thought that I would show you guys some of the common things that you'll find in a biochemistry lab. Of course, one of the most important things are pipettes. So these are when we talk about pipettes in a biochemistry lab or a molecular biology lab, you're usually talking about these like micro pipetters. So they come in different sizes um, with different amounts of liquid and then they have different tip sizes that go into them and then you suck up liquid and push it out. Yeah, so we, we tend to refer to them by their sizes. So like this one is goes from 20 to 200 microliters and we call it like a P200. Um, so this one goes to 20, we call it a P20. This one goes to 10, we call it a P10. And this one goes to 1,000, we call it a P1000. So 1,000 microliters is one milliliter. Um, we also have a lot of tubes. Oh wait, before we move on to tubes, let's talk about um, other things. So this is a, another so this is another type of pipette so this is a pipette man so this guy like actually sucks up like bigger amounts usually and we have these different size of like sticky pipette things that go in here and then we can suck up liquid and push it out and so we use this for like larger volumes of liquid this pipe this thing is super super helpful um, so basically it replaces like bulby things like this um, and other type of bulby things that themselves replace mouth pipetting, which is literally what it sounds like people would like suck up um, liquid through pipettes, which is super, super dangerous um, and not a good thing to do. Um, other types of pipettes, so you have these like Pasteur pipettes, which are glass. Um, we use these um, a lot for like when we're doing pH balancing um, small amounts of like acid or base. Um, a transfer pipette, which are good for when you don't really need to be exact, but you just want to like squirt things from one place to another. Now we can talk about tubes. So these are Falcon tubes. Falcon is like a brand name, I think, but everyone just calls them Falcon tubes usually. So they have these like conical bottom, um, which makes them good for like centrifuging and stuff, but bad for when you like want to hold it up because it just falls down. Um, so then we have racks which can hold them and stuff. Um, so this is a 50 uh, milliliter. This is a 15. Yeah, I make little like re recycle like lab boxes and stuff to make things for my bench that'll hold stuff and be really handy. Um, so those, but probably the tube that we use the most often is the Eppendorf, which Eppendorf is another brand name, but it's this micro centrifuge tube, which is, they usually hold about like 1.8 milliliters. Um, and so if you think this thing is small, wait till you see the PCR strip tubes. So this is for PCR, which we talked about, which is that method to copy lots of DNA in the machine. Um, so these tubes are a lot smaller. I think they're like 0.2 milliliters, which would be 200 microliters for if you're trying to put that into perspective for the pipettes we talked about earlier. Um, so yeah, so we have these little like pulse spin centrifuges. So centrifuges is this another super important thing. So a centrifuge is basically something that spins really fast. Um, and this is where like the conical comes in handy because you can like pellet out things and then they'll stick to the very bottom and you can suck out the liquid from above. Um, so this is like a pulse centrifuge. So it's just like a little lab bench one you can use when you want to spin things really quickly. Um, but then if you want to actually like spin things more controlledly and for a longer time and faster, um, you have like bench top centrifuges like this. Um, so the tubes go in there, that's this lid. Um, and then you can set the settings for how fast you want it to go and for how long. This one actually has like a refrigeration too, um, but not all centrifuges do. Um, we also have a lot bigger centrifuges that I'll get to in a little bit. Um, but moving this way, this is our water bath. So we use this a lot for thawing cell pellets um, and for doing transformations, which is where you like 
um, heat shock to get bacteria to take in a plasmid um, DNA that you um, want them to take in. Um, and so this is at the end of my bench. And so I often think that people are coming to see me when really they're just coming to um, do the transformations. So I get very confused because I seem very popular, but really it's just the water bath. The water bath also makes really loud growling noises when it's um, running low on water. So if, that ha if you see that happen somewhere, fill the water so that people don't go crazy. Um, okay, so now let's go see those bigger centrifuges. So this is uh, like a bench top one. This one is really good for like purifying, I'm um, sorry, spinning down mini preps um, and protein um, co concentrating. It's swinging bucket, so it has these different like adapters you can put in to, for different sizes of tubes or plates. And then we have even bigger centrifuges in our centrifuge room. So yeah, so these are, we use these when we're spinning down like liters of cell culture. Um, so these are more swinging buckets. And then we also have these ultra centrifuges, which go super, super, super fast. Um, and those are really good for when you're trying to, like once you've broken out, broken, um, broken open cells and you want to spin out, like spin down, like to separate the soluble stuff from the membrane gunk. It's really good. And so these use um, these fixed rotor adapters, so the, the tubes are held in a fixed position, unlike the swinging bucket. They also have, another thing you might see is like shakers for um, doing like cell growth in little um, tubes, like after you do transformation, you're trying to um, like rec let the cells recover. And then we have a bigger shaker incubator, um, which we do for use for like um, doing mini preps, like smaller cultures. Um, we have larger incubators for other things. Um, we also have PPCR machines, which we've talked about before. Um, this is a spectroscoper, uh, is that the word? Um, so basically you stick your little cuvette in here and it measures how much light goes through different wavelengths. Um, and that can tell you, like you can use it for like Bradford and stuff um, to get protein concentrations. Or if you want to do it with um, bacterial cells to get like how, well, how much they've grown and stuff. Um, this is a nano drop, which is a, similar type of thing but it uses a tiny little drop so you don't use as much sample um we also have a lot of other stuff like freezers so this is like a minus 20 freezer and these are our minus 80s which we use for like long-term storage of sensitive things like proteins so those are really really cold um and one a couple last things before i forget this is a vortex um so basically you stick your finger or well, you don't usually stick your finger, but you stick something on here and it'll vortex. So it like mixes it up really well. Um, there was one other thing. Oh, I can't, yes. I can't forget to show you parafilm, which is like the world's greatest thing. So parafilm is kind of like this waxy, thick, like cellophane type stuff. That gets, you can stretch it out a lot and you can use it to like wrap around the edges of tubes or petri dishes or stuff that you don't want um, things to leak into or out of. And it's really, really fun to play with and really, really awesome and lasts like forever. Um, oh, and these are just a little tip. This is really um, handy for doing, like making a PCR strip tube rack is you take the tip racks um, like once you, for these tip boxes, they usually come in like trays. Um, sometimes they come in like just bags and you have to fill them yourself, which is what I did in underground. But here we have them come in these trays. And so when you replace the tray, then you're left with like an empty rack. And so you can um, put a couple of them together and tape them and it makes a really good holder. Um, so that's basically um, some of the key things that you'll find in the lab.